just Hi, real quick. Johnson, the armchair life and appeal Japan. Video... Did they all walk around with with subtitles Yo, and jutsus? What was life like for the average citizen living in Imperial Japan? This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More I don't know what later. Skillshare is. For our story, we follow the journey of two everywhere. average citizens living under the rule of the Japanese Empire. One of these citizens is ethnically Japanese, and the other is Han Chinese, born in the imperial territory of Taiwan. This will allow us to experience two different perspectives of life in imperial Japan. If you guys well, like the this Taiwanese format, person we can probably had a very bad time in this series. Probably Before very bad time. Every day. By the way, man, a, a really cool movie about the people of Japan is The Geisha, man. That was a, a good movie back in the day. Really fucking deep and shit. Thank you, Henry Tang. We should first explore the, Geisha the is a good movie. of Ten years, man. I didn't see that. That would come to define it. A good place to start is 1868, when the old feudal system, known as the Shogunate, was replaced with a strong centralized government, which sought to achieve direct control over its population. This came to be known as the Meiji Restoration, yeah, a that's critical why I was moment talking about in that. Japan's history, as the new imperial government embraced Western technology and bureaucracy. Which... You want to see her full audiences, man? Look at this. The Mad Emperor, Imperial Japan equals Best Japan. That that is that is that is a hopeful audience, stood in man. stark contrast to the isolationist shogunate that had existed for centuries prior. With a new internationalist foreign policy came an active hand in global affairs, which resulted in several wars and expeditions, significantly expanding the reach of the Japanese state. As the economy shifted and the war machine I know needed so to less be fueled, of, so, there so were low massive about this repercussions era. for the common imperial subject. Oh, we're following Izamuda. Let's check his life. The year is 1923, and for our Japanese individual, Isamu, life could have begun in a rural area outside of Tokyo. <coughs> his family had been farmers for hundreds of years, but in the generations since the Meiji Restoration, the Japanese landscape must be so beautiful. I can't wait to go there one day. Textile you know, do, go to Japan, vacation, you know, two weeks something as a European, but don't fucking chill in Tokyo all the time. Get out there. See a normal village. See... Nature, man, that must be insane. That must be mind blowing. Workshop. This is something that Isamu's family takes particular pride in, and indeed, so does the whole of the empire. For modern all these videos make me wanna. So is it crazy how you guys are? You guys are historical people. You guys watch a streamer that plays historical games. When you watch historical stuff like TV shows, videos, or movies, it triggers a feeling inside your brain that you want to play games about it. You know what I mean? When I watch Saving Private Ryan, I afterwards want to play Steel Division. This makes me want to play um, EU4 Japan and build production sites and stuff. It's so weird. You know? Yeah, you guys all agree. It's crazy, man. My friend stays in Japan. The normal people are very xenophobic. I don't know. That's very fucking the agriculture now superficial. for less than 20% of the national GDP. In pre-Meiji Japan, almost the entire society was agrarian-based. I played well when you played well. Oh, sorry for that, man. Shuin, Taihoku, Taiwan. Oh, mail, oh, mail. Meanwhile, life for our Taiwanese subject, Su Yin, is a different matter. Unlike Isamu, Su Yin and her family still work in agriculture, not for themselves, however, but to sustain the working population of Japan's home islands. And while Su Yin's family lives under Japan and faces a degree of discrimination, they have shown rapid adaptation to the Japanese regime. Forceful assimilation has been something the imperial government has implemented in recent years. Rural Japanese boomers are xenophobic just like rural American people. That's very superficial. If I would guess if I as a tourist, like I've been living in China, if if you go to a random ass village in Japan or China in 2021, they're gonna be nice to you, man. If you fucking behave and you're not a fucking white guy who's like, oh well, where's the five star hotel? Uh, here's my money. They're gonna be nice to you, man. Maybe inside some people think, oh, what is this white guy doing here? When I went to Chinese villages, they were the nicest people ever, man. It was more like they wanted to show off. They wanted to be like, they wanted to give you gifts and stuff to show their strategy. Stuff like changing that. Changing Taiwanese Chinese names to Japanese, 
promoting the Japanese language, and finally drafting the Taiwanese population into the Imperial Army. By 1930, Isamu is 12 and is just starting his secondary education. In the Denmark, Japanese we say don't be like German tourists. Yeah, German tourists so are cancer, man. The traditional That's... Honor code of Bushido, English and German tourists are just the worst thing ever. To the state. Su Yin, now also 12, has they already all have katanas, finished school. Man. Her education like was an different anime than convention. Isamu's, both because of her ethnicity and her gender. Because Su Yin was Taiwanese, her education was focused on breaking down her Han Chinese ethnic identity and reconstructing her as a loyal Japanese subject. For that reason, only primary education was mandatory, which focused heavily on literacy, but also on familiarity with Japanese culture and customs. Hmm. Universal education, especially of girls, was something relatively limited in Japan and its territories. Legal equality would not be fully realized until 1945 in Japan under a new post-war constitution, and in Taiwan in 1946 under the Republican Chinese government. One important hmm. aspect of Japanese culture is faith, <laughs> namely Shintoism, and by this time, state Shintoism. The Japanese government has taken Beautiful massive religion, steps man. since the Meiji no Restoration no to not beheadings. only oversee religion Just fucking, in its hey, empire, hey, 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 but conflate it with ultra-national. <laughs> I'm talking about the peaceful religion and you see the kamikazes flying by. <laughs> Jesus Isamu's Christ. family is traditional <laughs> and they take their faith seriously. Because of the newly implemented state Shintoism, they now look down on foreign religions such as Taoism and Christianity. Not only that, but they view their emperor, Hirohito, as a deity, descending from the Japanese sun god, Amaterasu. Because Amaterasu! Isamu and much Sorry, of the it's Japanese a jutsu that Itachi uses. If you don't know that, get a fucking life. Direct successor of the sun god. They believe this gives him a divine right to rule over both Japan and the world. In Taiwan, Su Yin practices Taiwanese Buddhism, which is one of the few tolerated religions in Imperial Japan. Thank you, Bojo, in fact, man. Japanese Buddhists work with those in Taiwan frequently, but because of how different Japanese Buddhism is from Taiwanese Buddhism, there hasn't been much cooperation. As for future hopes and aspirations, Isamu is looking forward to grab- I listen to a podcast, right? And uh, to most of us, Buddhism is a very peaceful religion. Buddhist people are very zen, chill, and stuff like that. And I just uh, realized, because I didn't I didn't care, but now I listen to a podcast about it. The Rohingya minority in Myanmar is- Don't make this wrong, Tommy. They are being hunted and genocided by Buddhists, right? That's what I I listened to a podcast about that. The Rohingya are being hunted by Buddhists. So yeah, also Buddhists are kind of fucked up. I mean, everybody's fucked up, dude. Jesus. Graduating high school. Unlike what happened in previous generations, he won't be able to freely choose his wife. Instead, his father can will choose his wife, wife for him shortly uh, it's after like he becomes feudal adult, stuff. A tradition known as Miai or Omiai. She'll have to be of pure Japanese blood, as his father would never choose a half Korean or someone of the lower Jeez, classes. Man. In the meantime, Isamu is on track to taking on more responsibilities in the home-based factory. He plans on eventually taking over once his father decides to retire. Su Yin, on the other hand, now goes into a period of unofficial training to become a wife and a mother. Once she is old enough, she will be given Very to a husband remarkable and how expected to, to take Nazi care Germany, of the household. Yeah. Her main concern is not if she'll like her husband, but whether or not she'll be able to bear children. If she fails to do so, she may have to return to her parents' home and live there. But as well, hey, but actually, I don't want to go too far. It's kind of funny. It would be interesting to see world statistics. What group of people, culture, religion, is the least aggressive and did the least damage in the history of the world? Who will that be? Must be the gingers. What the fuck the gingers do, you know? Eskimos? Yeah, Eskimos. Yeah. Eskimos? Switzerland? Yeah. Dude, Switzerland must have like a dark point of history where they fucking did something bad. Yeah, Eskimos, true. Switzerland, Eskimo, ah, the Irish, yeah, a lot of bloodshed there. The Inuit, Native Americans, they had their wars and stuff. Incans, they were fucking ripping people's heart out. What do you mean? Swiss and Eskimos coming around, huh? The thing is, the Swiss, they fuck you behind your back, man. They fuck you with money, dude. Irish. Inuit people, definitely. Hmm. Switzerland was in a lot of wars in the Middle Ages. Hmm. Peaceful people and cultures never survive. Ooh, that's a... Ooh, deep. 
Deep. War approaches, our characters Deep. may not go down the path they planned Hawaiians? For. By the time they're 18 they years old in 1936, Samu oh, and Suyin find getting themselves drawn to increasingly to supporting the Imperial Armed Forces. Both will have different ways to support the troops. Both will have different reasons Around the year 1500, them. Swiss mercenaries were the most sought after and feared troops in Europe. Hmm. Doing so, and both will have very different experiences in the field. But that's a tale for another time. Now, on to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the... Yo, what's the etiquette as a Twitch streamer that reacts to YouTubers? Do I show this? Is that the etiquette? I don't wanna... I wanna be nice. I wanna... I want to show respect, man. I kind of do it, right? Yeah, Ultimate I'm going to play that. Self -improvement tool. He deserves Offering that, users obviously. Thousands of no, it's too long, no. He deserves that. Ranging We're going to listen. Writing, to business, to video editing, and much more. Skillshare helped me out tremendously He's during the early stages of my YouTube channel and continues to help. True story, though. I was also sponsored by them, dude. Um, If you want to start... Getting into modern jobs, like editing. Edit. I always say this, man. Editing is such a future job, man. If you learn editing and you talk, you text uh, Twitch streamers, hey, I can be your editor, blah, blah, blah. And you start editing for them and you teach your good editor with, for example, Skillshare. That's that's the future, man. That's big, dude. Of the classes I've taken so far, Matt Balak's about growing your YouTube channel stands out in particular. It's actually it details really... just how one should go about creating a mission statement. Dude, I'm legit actually want to... There's like short little clips. It's not too annoying, like two hours. If, like, if there's like something about the stock market, I would love. I would love doing to listen to that research, actually. Making thumbnails, playlists, annotations, and doing collaborations. If you, you've you can learn editing at school now. Why did you go to school? That is precisely because of Balak's class on Skillshare. If you sign up for the premium membership, you will gain access to the full selection of over 10,000 classes today. 10, Whatever classes. you want to learn about, you can do it here. So I'm trying to get sponsored. I'm showing respect to the Ultra story here. The promo link in the description down below will get their first two months Check for him out, free, boys. Which Have is you checked out the vid on the French Japanese in Europe and America? No, I didn't. new skill you want to learn. And after that, it's less than $10 a month, making Skillshare one of the most affordable learning Filming services out there. Filming is a school subject in Northern Ireland. I can Ireland. recommend you check it out and see for yourself.